In this video, I want to talk a little bit about nucleophile strength. Nucleophile strength. And just as a bit of review, a nucleophile is an atom or an ion or a molecule that really wants to give away electrons. And it really wants to give away electrons to, I guess you could view it as another nucleus, and form a bond with that nucleus. And that's why it loves nucleus. File literally means lover. So it's a nucleus lover. So it wants to, it wants to give give electrons away to bond with another nucleus, to bond with a nucleus. And what we want to think about in this video is what makes something a really strong nucleophile. So it really wants to do this versus a medium nucleophile versus a weak nucleophile. So let's just start with the strong, the strong nucleophile. So I'll write it right over here. So let's think about what a strong nucleophile would be like. Well, any nucleophile, it will have to have some kind of excess electrons. Either it has a full negative charge, and you'll see in kind of the, the strong and the medium nucleophiles, that will be the case. Or maybe it might have a partial negative charge, and that might be the case for the weak nucleophiles. So in general, it's going to have, to have some type of excess electrons, and that's usually the case with things that are pretty electronegative. So it has to have be electronegative enough to have to have gotten an electron to give away. So let me write this down here. So in general, a nucleophile, so before we even talk about strong nucleophiles, they have to be electro electronegative enough to have excess excess negative to have excess negative charge. And if you remember about electronegativity, it increases from the bottom left of the periodic table to the top right. And in general, in organic chemistry, the, the atoms, or, or I guess the parts of molecules, or I guess the ion versions of atoms that are electronegative enough to have excess negative charge are going to be in this area right around here. They're going to be in this area right over here. So most of the nucleophiles you're going to see are going to have, they're either going to be the, the negative ion version of some of these atoms, or they're going to have these atoms attached to other things. But the, the, the part that actually really wants to give away the electron is going to usually be dealing with one of these, one of these atoms right over here. So you say, okay, fine. So these are, you know, these are potential nucleophiles. But which of these are going to be strong versus medium versus weak? Now remember what we said: a nucleophile it really wants to give away the electrons, and we know that electronegativity that means that you really want to hog electrons. So in order to just even be a nucleophile, you have to be electronegative enough to have ex to have an excess negative charge. So that's why we're usually going to see these characters. But the strongest of the nucleophiles is going to be the ones that can be a nucleophile but aren't too electronegative. They still want to give away electrons. And if you look at out of these right here, which is the one that is least electronegative? Well, if you were to compare, let's compare, let's compare iodide to fluoride. Let me just compare these two. So if I were to compare so fluoride, so fluorine has seven valence electrons, right? It's in group seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And let's say it swipes to become fluoride, it would have to swipe an electron from someplace else, which is not a crazy thing for fluorine to do because it's so electronegative. So if it swipes it from someplace else, then you have a negative charge. So this is the fluoride anion. Let's compare that to the iodide anion. So iodide, iodine will look like this. Once again, it's in the same group. It's a halogen. It also has seven electrons when it's in its neutral state, but it's reasonably electronegative. It is electronegative enough to have excess negative charge or to swipe it from someone else. So maybe it swipes it from someone else, just like fluorine did. And now we have the iodide the iodide anion. And my question is, which of these are going to be more, which of these are going to be a stronger nucleophile? Well, the stronger nucleophile is the one that wants to give away its electron more. And 
iodide, or we should say iodine, is less electronegative than fluorine. So this iodide ion is more likely to give away, it's more likely to give away its electron. So this right here, so iodide is actually one of the strongest nucleophiles. So one of the strongest. So it's electronegative enough to have a charge, to have swiped an electron from someone else. But once it has it, it's not so electronegative that it wants to keep it. It really wants to give it away. So this is a very strong nucleophile. Now, if you ask, well, what about a medium nucleophile? Well, medium nucleophiles would be something like fluoride. Fluoride, this fluoride anion right there, it's electronegative. It swiped an electron. It has an extra electron to give away. Right? It has this extra electron to give away, but it's, you know, it's kind of happy keeping it because it's so electronegative. It kind of likes keeping it. So that right there is a medium, is a medium nucleophile. And another one, just so that you see that they're not always just single atom, single atoms or single ions. Another one is hydroxide. OH. So hydroxide in in what uh, Uh, oxygen typically only has six valence electrons in a neutral state, so it's one, two, three, four, five, six. But when it, you get hydroxide, it swiped an electron from some other atom, and so then it becomes a hydroxide anion. And it's usually swiping it from an uh, from a hydrogen, and so this will have a negative charge. It has an excess. It has an excess electron to give away, but oxygen is so electronegative that it's kind of like, well, you know, I don't mind keeping it. Iodide says, hey, I really want to give it away. Hydroxide says, well, I have it. I could give it away, but you know, I I'm pretty electronegative, so I kind of like hogging it. So this is also another example. This is another example of a medium strength nucleophile. So the last one we have to think about is, well, what's going to be a weak? If this up here, if this up here when they have an extra electron, if this is medium, and these are the most electronegative, this down here, if this is a strong nucleophile, what's going to be a weak nucleophile? What is going to be a weak, a weak nucleophile? Well, weak nucleophiles don't even have an excess, a full excess negative charge. They might just have a partial negative charge. And so they might be kind of predisposed to maybe giving an electron if the, maybe the person they're giving, the nucleus that they want to, that they're in love with is you know, really electron deficient. Maybe it's a carbocation of some kind. And the most typical weak nucleophile is actually just water, just H2O. H2O just looks like this. You have oxygen bonded to two hydrogens, and the oxygen is neutral. It has one, two, three, four, five, six valence electrons. And overall, it's neutral, but we know that oxygen is much more electronegative than the hydrogens. So it hogs the electrons. It even hogs hydrogen's electrons that are here and there. And since they spend more time around the oxygen, the oxygen end has a partial negative charge, and the hydrogen ends have partial have partial positive charges. And because of this, this this part right here, I mean we already said when even when oxygen has a full negative charge, it's still only a medium elect uh, a medium nucleophile, have to be very clear. Uh, it's still only a medium nucleophile. So when you can imagine when it has only a partial negative charge, as in the case of water, it's going to be a weak nucleophile, but it still might want to give away its electron to something like this. If I have a carbocation some sitting Let's say I have something that looks like this. A carbon that's essentially, maybe it's lost one of its, its, it's lost, you know, the thing that it was bonded to stole its electron. So now this carbon has a positive charge. It's a carbocation. It's a tertiary carbocation. This, in a normal case, this wouldn't be a strong nucleophile. But this guy could say, well, you know, this guy really needs an electron. I have some excess negative charge. Maybe I can give my electron to that guy and bond with it. And we saw that actually in the SN1 reaction. And the whole discussion over strong and weak nucleophiles, the, the, the reason why it's even important to begin with is it's going to help us decide whether we're going to have either an SN1 or an SN2 or what type of reaction will go, will, will go ahead based on what we have uh, floating around in our solution.